Hi, Keila. Hey there. Hey. Dark week. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> you, has it affected your family in any way? Yeah, apart from emotionally, but I mean, are there any direct? No, no, it's interesting. I have a complicated family dynamic with this because my my lineage is Jewish and I'm very much, I was affected by the Holocaust and things like that mm -hmm. as a family, but they did not, they were very against the creation of Israel, mm -hmm. like oh. in in yeah. general, they, they did not believe that that was the solution to this problem um, and have long sympathized with the um, treatment of the Palestinian people, mm. and the, the ejection of them from their lands. So it's mm. complicated. I, I mean, it's devastating, mm. but it's very complicated. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so um, and I've been so. I, you know, I know some people there and it's, yeah, it's just not well, good. Well, yeah, all it certainly hasn't progressed things. <clears throat> no, no. And maybe we're lucky that there's been general peace for so long or quiet, I should say, maybe not peace, but. Yeah, yeah. All right, how about you? Well, I mean, uh, nothing much. I mean, my father's still in hospital. They're trying to rehab him in order so that he can leave. But, you know, it's, yeah, so it's complicated. <laughs> <laughs> Have to get extra care help. Yeah. So it, it's kind of frustrating because he's been in for, well, at least over two weeks, going on three weeks. And oh, it's like, wow. if I'd known, I could have tried to take a trip somewhere, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so I've been trying to see, connect with a friend in, in England that I haven't seen in a long time. But it's just not working out. So, yeah. Well, hopefully he gets out quickly. Well, or not. I mean, <laughs> he's safer where he is. Although, yeah. you know, I mean, as uh, um, he hates the food and he feels like he's in prison, but. <laughs> yeah. But also a little reprieve without, without for you. Without additional care help, it's, it's uh, yeah, it would be very stressful. Yeah. How old is he? 89. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah. But, you know, somebody who was extremely fit during their life. So now that everything, you know, is, he's, you know, he's, he, um, he, you know, fought back against pneumonia, you know, I mean, he, 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 so uh, his body is strong, but there's not much to live for when you're completely blind and, you know, getting up yeah. to sit in, sit in a chair for a few hours and constantly fall asleep and constantly going to the toilet. I mean, it's miserable. Yes. Yes. I helped both my grandparents age and um, they took it very differently. <laughs> my grandfather uh, was very reluctant about leaving <laughs> and yeah. fought it tooth and nail and was just a total grouch his name you know how everybody has like a nickname for yes. their it, his was grump <laughs> he was grump to me always forever and he definitely uh took that in earnest in his dying days <laughs> um but my grandma alternatively was like literally said i think i'm gonna go now and wow. and then you know died the did. next day wow. i mean it was wow. really she was like i'm done i'm gonna go thanks yeah. <laughs> you're gonna be okay <laughs> <laughs> it was really it's really remarkable to see the you know the different the different yeah. ways that it happens hello helen and steve hello hey we're just hey chit-chatting yeah 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 <laughs> Do you do we know if we're expecting Ken? I sent him a note. He hasn't answered a few days he's, ago. He's no. at um, he's at uh, IIW. Yeah, ah. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't expect him to be. Got it. So we probably will have a light lo load for today, in terms of yeah. attendance. 
Yeah, I think the idea was that why don't we like work through any outstanding items on the white paper and call it good. Yes, agreed. <laughs> Alrighty then. So we'll just do our quick uh, spiel so that for the recording has it, which is that we are welcome to the Cardio Working Group today as uh, October the 12th. We are governed by the Hyperledger antitrust policy, as well as the code of conduct. Um, we're going to skip the details because everybody knows each other here and has heard that a million times. So without further ado, today's agenda is the white paper. So you chatted it. Do you also want to screen share? Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, hold on one second. So if you remember... Oh. If you remember, we were we went through a lot of this already, so it doesn't need a line reading. Correct. Uh, unless do you, want, uh, do you want me to go back to the notes we had taken about that would be helpful? Yes. So we have a blank page development roadmap. <laughs> okay. And and in light of some of the discussions we've been having, you know, do we want to alter applications in healthcare? You know, what do we want to uh, and do we want to and change anything. Yep. Okay, let me find, I had, I looked at them the other day. Oh, here we go. Resuming from page 23, add mention of biometric binding for the app somewhere. It's a note that I had written. Okay. The ride and that hasn't been done, so. Maybe it's like a little footnote that says, yeah, this can yeah, include yeah. biometric binding. <laughs> uh, Adna, okay. I'm taking a note on that. I won't try and do it right. I, I can. And That's fine. Can metric binding and liveness check that, you know, I'll, I'll put a note in. Okay. Then I had a note. Do we define discuss slash define derived credentials or derivative credentials? Oh, right, right, right. I do have the note about the timeline and roadmap. There we go. And we have a whole page on derivative credentials. Oh, look at that. Check that off. Wonderful. And look at that image. Excellent. Okay. And then. Oh, uh, uh, oh yeah. so hang on. There's, oh. another page. There's a note here of biometric binding. Is that sufficient? I believe it should be. Let me, let me make it. it I just had add there. mention. So we get to check okay, it out. Okay, done. Okay. Uh, then we have the timeline and roadmap that we are working on now, and the security best practices. Perhaps was a that's placeholder. It's definitely something we don't have. Okay, hold on. I have some additional. This is going back one more meeting notes. <clears throat> Did have you replaced machine readable governance with the? decentralized ecosystem governance? So that's interesting. Um, for some reason, um, we are now talking about it as machine readable governance again. Oh, really? Well, I don't know. I mean, Sam has been like in various governance things. Sam has been reluctant to use DGov because it hasn't been fully adopted. Like to, that, that DGov only applies to uh, in oh, in DCO's um, implementation of governance. Yeah, DGov is, you can think of DGov as like a proprietary name. Machine Readable Governance is the standards name. Oh, okay. Got it. All right. Well, we'll, we won't do that then. I, I mean, to me, Machine Readable Governance is also has the benefit of being very self-explanatory. <laughs> <laughs> Right, it's computer yes. governance. It's computer um, code that can be rules that can define the rules. So I think there's some value there. Okay, cool. Um, the uh, there is a why decentralized identity slide. Yeah, I think I think the. Um... 
that needed work. I have, That's this one. Yes. I oh, and it said, looks like I it said, was worked on. Yes, it was. Those notes have already been, have all been addressed. Fantastic. Okay, cool. Those were too old. I'll go back to the other ones. So, um, so we had, you wanted to start with the timeline. So I think now that we've gone through these other ones I mentioned, we can mm -hmm. go there. So, I think, I guess the question is sort of, what do we want this to convey? And then we can go through the details of, of what details should go on it. Um, we should probably, this is development roadmap. So to me, this is forward only. I think we should add to me, it would start, let's just sort of like brainstorm and then we'll put it on this mm -hmm. pretty document. To me, it's, um, we're in an evaluation phase and we should probably put that on there. Mm -hmm. oh my God, I'm not in edit mode anymore. Hold on, edit. I think it would be evaluation and market assessment or alternate. Are you writing that? I'm just taking, I'm just writing notes on my, okay. on the minutes. Got you. Right. There's some kind of an evaluate. We need to like reevaluate given the state of COVID. Then I think we would tune schemas. I don't think we need to tune the agents, but tune the schemas to the new area of focus. Maybe we need to identify this is Cardia's code base roadmap. So I don't know how important it is to put the identification of a pilot on the roadmap. Maybe that's not important. viability for feasibility. Mm. Cool. I think, oh, sorry, I'll let you finish. Okay. 
I think to me, there's probably an item which is to expand the agent functionality to the latest standards, bio, you know, security, biometric, et cetera. Maybe we just generically say to the latest standards. <laughs> I guess One question is, you know, if this is the Cardia project road map, the other thing we could put on here is to grow the base of contributors. I don't know, you know, the, these are technical things we've put here, but I don't know if we want to commingle those. Do you mean commingle the biz like what do you mean yeah like cardia the project versus cardia the technology oh yeah yeah i mean because one of the things that hyperledger looks at in graduating projects which i don't i don't know if that's a twinkle in our eye at this point but um is our like the diversity of the project so having like a lot of different contributors and maintainers from a lot of different companies so if you know one company goes away the whole thing doesn't fall apart so yeah looking towards graduation from you know out of the labs to the um project yeah to a graduated project saying something along those lines like because there are several different kind of bullet points you have to meet um I can't remember them all but I remember we looked at them and we were like yes. oh we'll a lab right now <laughs> lab is fine um but yeah just tipping our hat saying we get that there's a lot of stuff that we need to do so we will eventually do that <laughs> <laughs> How does that sound, uh, Helen? I would add one more, just like contributor base and meet the tech, you know, the re the requirements is set out by the TOC, the te uh, or TSC uh, to advance the project, blah, blah, blah. something like that. Because there's like a lot of them. It's not just like one thing. TOC is? Oh, uh, or TSC, Technical Hyperledger Technical Steering Committee. I believe it's what it's called. And I believe that's the arm that has control over the graduation status. They like vote and things. Is, is that graduate status a kind of technically ac accurate way of describing where we want to go? Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Okay. It I mean, might be incubation, graduate into the next. I'll have to, hmm, let me look. It might be called incubation. That's just Okay. Yeah, well, I think just, just advance, advance the project. project. Advance the project. Yep. There we go. Perfect. Yeah. I mean, I think 
on similar on a similar vein i mean the goal here is to get a sustainable implementation of this i mean i don't know how this to me this is the development roadmap so i think um that's a little too generic <laughs> but that is ultimately our goal so if we think about that um from a development standpoint i think we it's really about finding that application and then getting people to to trial it um and what does it take to get that to that trial i think it's, it's at a very high level what we've mentioned here we're going to need to build the tools to support that use case and then make sure that the code really ticks all of those boxes in terms of like minimum security requirements and minimum functional requirements, which there were definitely still some outstanding from the last time we implemented this. Um, I don't know what else is going on in the general universe around you know like do we need to are we going to have to make changes uh, in the machine readable governance space are there other things we need to sort of backport to the work we've done here since we've put this code down for a while that's a good question i think mike would be the person to answer that okay That's fair. Um, okay, those are my my thoughts. Okay. I mean, maybe Ken might have a few thoughts on this too, but question is how, you know, is that good enough or do we need a bit more detail? What's the slide before this? Okay. Look at that. And then, huh, I don't, that seems to be the wrong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't know how that oh, happened. And then that last one is, is conclusion. Okay. Got it. So, uh, Helen, is that sufficient? sign off yeah join the meetings or contact us to find out more visit the website yeah i like it is is there a is there a copyright open source thing that i need to put on this oh good question um it's probably one of those like creative commons licensing deals yeah. um we didn't have that in our old version. Uh, maybe we did. I don't remember. <laughs> Let me, uh, I'm just checking now. Let me see what they have on their white papers. They do not include it. Like Hyperledger itself, they do white papers and they it is not included on any there. So I would just, I think we're fine for now. Okay. Not going to sweat it then. Nope. Okay. And so should I run the development road path past Ken before we? Yes, definitely. And I don't know if we need a, like, do we want to transition from, from the Aruba thing and say, you know, given the evolving use cases where we, we want to, this is why we're doing this, sort of why isn't Aruba still a thing? Did we cover? I don't know that we covered sort of the. Uh, yeah, it's the, yes. Um, I, I do think the, yeah, there is, a, there is a sort of weird transition. So we go from watch a demonstration applications in healthcare, how Cardia was implemented in Aruba. Maybe we need to reorder, maybe we should reorder some of these. Uh, 
because the because the development roadmap roadmap slide is light at the moment, I think it would be helpful to have an explanation. I might move that applications in healthcare yeah. to before the development roadmap. Yeah. That gives us a little more of a transition. Yeah. Okay, so maybe. Okay, I'll work on that. I don't have any genius ideas off the top of my head. <laughs> You're forgiven, Trevor. Yeah. <laughs> Um, okay. And then I think it, it's really just a question of, do we need a warmer handoff to why the development roadmap is like kind of light generically? Mm -hmm. And then, uh, and then is there anything else kind of specifically that has developed? Like, I know there were changes in those connections. Like we were in the middle of a connection development when we were implementing this last time and the methodology for doing those connection handshakes. So I'm not sure how sort of stale our code base is for some of the basic stuff that might need to be updated. Well, we don't necessarily have to, um, I mean, does that something that has to be advertised? <laughs> um, no, but I think from a roadmap perspective, it's sort of like maintaining that, yeah. um, you know, get keeping it up to. Yeah speed with the current developments in this uh, space. Yes, yeah. I'll add a line about that. that. Okay. Uh, those were, I think, let me just go back and check the other notes. I think those were the sections that we had commented on. There was one more, let me just check my note. Oh, security best practices were we, do we think we've kind of covered that? I think this was to acknowledge that as we were going through the previous document, it was like, well, we should, maybe we should mention this. Maybe, you know, some of these are sort of optional add-ons. And mm -hmm. so we could, instead of having to go back and expand on it in a zillion places, we could just mention some of them in a best practices slide. Somebody's going to have to write that. Yeah, and I don't know. I guess it would be useful to reread it kind of front to back and say, do we think we need that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so and you assign yourself a don't. Class. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I did. <sighs> okay. Put it in the minutes. Okay. Um, all right, excellent. I did uh make contact with uh company that deals in patient identity. Um, so I'm hoping to meet with their chief strategy officer next week um, and kind of do an, an intro to what we're working on here and see if they have any interest in their roadmap planning, how Cardia might add some mm -hmm. value. Um, so we are working on that and I'm hoping that we may be able to get them as a guest speaker and sort of get them engaged and involved as a as that use case we were talking about. Mm -hmm. um, so that's in the hopper. I know Ken also had some follow-ups, as did I, on things to continue to explore for the next sort of vision. Um. Yeah, I mean, having more use case, I would like to have some fine, fine folks. I guess, let me back up. <laughs> I think the idea was to have 
speakers come so that we could bring more kind of awareness about our project, interest in Cardia, what, what we're doing, and then also help us sort of feel our way th- to those next development steps. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's been super successful strategy. Um, at the end of the day, we're, you know, this project needs to grow in terms of functionality and technology as well as participants and adoption, et cetera. So if we are inviting folks to to speak, hopefully it's in the direction of, you know, where we want to be developing. So yes. yeah, it's like, I think it'll be a balance between having a speaker come kind of like what we've always done, right? We've always had meetings, um, some meetings that are more technical based and some meetings that are more kind of comms, intro, education based. Um, so if we wanted to kind of, you know, one speaker a month, you know, shoot for one speaker a month that that would lend itself to the education side of the house and us learning, you know, about use cases or whatever. And then one meeting that's more technical in nature, talking about any new contributions or new features or new work on features, things like that, um, that would be a good balance. So that's not to say we don't need speakers, but I don't think we need a zillion. Um, Agreed. Even if, even if we use those entry meetings not with speakers and just as walking through, um, you know, roadmaps or things like that, like non-technical things. I don't know. It might be, it's a balance. Agreed. Agreed. Although this, in this case, this is, um, this is really to try to kind of recruit them to get engaged with Cardia. Um, That's sort of my focus for the offline conversation and then and then if they are interested it may make sense to have them level set on sort of what is their you know what industry are they what are they you know what is their vision um if this does align and they have thought about this i think it it might be interesting you know this being dealing in patient identity credentials Mm -hmm. which i don't know that they have We'll, we'll have to find out yeah. And that's, I mean, that's a good point with all the speakers we've had doing that follow-up and, and, you know, inquiring about their interest in participating in Cardia moving forward. I know, you know, the, the, the two individuals who were talking about um, vital records, like they were working on something, right? Like the, that. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, the other, there was a couple in there that were really good speakers about their topic, but I don't know if we had any follow-up or follow-through with getting them actually engaged here on a regular basis with the community. Agreed. Agreed. Okay. All right, Sir Trevor, are there other, anything else on the white paper that you want to cover? No, no, I think I'm good. I'm, I'm, I mean, it's, it's been so long. I think if I'm just going to make, you know, this, this, a few little tiny text changes and things, but so I'll, I will also be reading through it um, okay. again, um, but nothing, there's nothing substantial. And what do we, when, when we say, okay, we've read through it enough times, we've tinkered, all of your little arrows are pointing the right direction <laughs> with yeah. no little tails. What do we want to have happen next? Like, are we That's doing- a question, over to Helen. <laughs> yes, Helen, what do we do with our white paper once we've finished it? for its current iteration. Yeah, I think we should definitely do a kind of update, blog post update that would run on the Hyperledger blog, um, just talking about the the state of Cardia and what this new white paper is and what it represents and, you know, updates from whatever, talk, just do, do a nice kind of description, kind of like what we do, Trevor, um, on our set, uh, when we put out new documents like this. Um, and then, yeah, give that summary blog and then um, work with the Hyperledger uh, staff, comm staff to promote it uh, more widely. Okay. I think we will want to nail down the, here's the use case we're exploring now, which I think we're ironing out um, around identity and kind of having identity credential for healthcare interactions. Uh, so I do think we should probably 
figure out what that language is and use that to get people, you know, as if we're going to build a little buzz, we should say, here's what we want to work on. If you're interested in this, come join us. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. 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 The we can be the better. Now do, is there an existing open source healthcare medical community? Does the healthcare industry use open source technologies at this point in any major way, like identity totally aside, but like for anything else? Yeah. So health language seven is the healthcare industry standards body. Hmm. So they are responsible for creating all of the healthcare data exchange standards. Uh, those uh, date back for many years, you know, like a long time they have, they're on, as far as I know, they're fourth, if I'm not mistaken, they're fourth uh, kind of standards. So what there is called again, the healthcare he health, health language seven, HL seven for short. Oh. And they are um, a public entity. I don't know exactly their, you know, their organization status. HL7.org. <laughs> yeah. Events. Yeah. Cause I'm wondering if we need to be more doing more to reach out to existing kind of op open source health communities um, to let them know what we're doing and, and see if there's room for anything of what we're doing, you know, any crossover there. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's not a bad idea. The, they, um, it's a very large organization with lots of mm -hmm. slow moving parts. Um, mm -hmm. But it's, it would be interesting to explore whether there is some uh, way to interact mm -hmm. collaboratively because they ultimately they are the healthcare standards body. Yeah. Cause that would be pretty cool if all of a sudden cardio was a standard for <laughs> in any way. Um, do, do we want to uh, just, just one question that comes up. Do we want to hedge on having a a cloud agent for um for people a cloud agent for people yeah so for those people who don't have um mobile devices that one solution is a cloud agent but i know i think ken has been reluctant to in in uh, in decks that would be produced for other um RFPs and whatnot to to say that because it is a bit developmentally far out. Um, I don't know that it's critical. That's for the because the the real issue isn't aren't the agents; it's the holder. I think the organizations you're working with would have a mobile device. They could have a an agent on a. It's more about the patient not having a mobile device. Yeah, exactly. It's more about the patient having very low tech yeah. challenge, you know, issues and and uh, um and losing it and like sort of how do you because if you're homeless and and have um mental health challenges and are very sick, like you're not worried about your other thing. Yeah. And your your identity credential, like you just maybe you don't want people to know your identity. That's the other problem, if especially, especially for some people who are trying to be off the grid. I I just I probably I think it was on a podcast I was listening to, but it was talking about um, Jimmy Carter's grandson, who is now a huge advocate for the unhoused population, and he like knew somebody on Facebook from high school who ended up, you know, um, on the streets and I think, uh, Salt Lake city actually. And, um, uh, anyways, he went, this, this Carter grandson tried to go and pick them up and go help them and bring them back to the peanut farm in Georgia and like basically provide a place for, um, uh, them to, you know, get clean or whatever. But they couldn't get him on a plane because the per it's so common when you're on the streets to lose your ID. Like you get it gets stolen, it gets lost, it gets thrown away, it gets you know left behind or whatever. And so it's a huge, absolutely. I think you know, finding a way to provide 
be verifiable credentials for the unhoused community would just, I mean, it would just be such a game changer, I think, in so many ways. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe it's that you do have a steward for their identity credential where they can like retrieve it when they need it. Um, right. By, by some bio, you know, maybe it's biometrically, you know, okay, you need your identity credential and you've lost it. You can, you know, know that this is a safe place. You can come back and we'll give you another one kind mm -hmm. of thing. I mean, I don't, I don't know that yeah. the challenge, the, the challenge is that that's, there's so many problems with that population mm -hmm. um, and trying to figure out how to solve for them. Could you derail you getting to the first level of like, okay, we've gotten right. some people on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it yeah. is functional. Now let's deal with those cases. Right. And, and there's, you know, there's also the scenario of maybe people can share mobile devices or, whatever we had this we did discuss this when we talk about um these challenges in other countries right where they have one phone for the family mm -hmm. and, and how do you manage families that? all name the same thing <laughs> <laughs> yes yes that does happen <laughs> that happens everywhere same thing yeah <laughs> yeah right or like nepal everybody's named sherpa mm -hmm. <laughs> So it's just their first name and then Sherpa. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah. it is, it's really, there's a lot of challenges around that. And I think, you know, I, I do think biometrics has a play there. And I, I think having the ability to credential them so that they can be distinct. Because the yeah. other value of that credential is that you can tell the difference between the two people with the same name because mm -hmm. they'd have different credentials. Where I grew up, everybody was named Jessica or Katie. <laughs> <laughs> um okay i can um i can try to reach out to hl7 uh we're working on a pilot project with them for something totally unrelated but maybe they can help guide me in a direction for getting yeah, in even touch if we with could someone just, like, brief them or you know if there's like a, some kind of working group that is open to new technologies or if they have some process of just, you know, producing, you know, providing, <laughs> providing information about what we're doing in some capacity would be good. Um, yeah. but yeah, we'll put out the, we'll put out the, uh, press release or the summary blog. We'll put out the, the white paper on the wiki page. Um, and maybe we'll do, we could do like a SIG. Um, I think what we did last time we spoke to the identity SIG, um and just walked through it and gave folks an update the identity sig they do a lot of they have a lot of good um speakers that come each week um or every other week or something i don't know but anyways yeah it'd be good to have somebody go whether you know you and trevor or mike and you and I don't know, whoever and just walk through the the new cardio white paper and what's different and what we're doing and just kind of let people know um i think that would be part of that tour and then we could even do a meetup uh, for the broader Hyperledger community. Um, they do online uh, through the meetup platform. Um, they do online events uh, for all over the world. And so we could have people all over the world hear about Cardia. So once once we have this, we could definitely use it as a tool to keep pushing on, on a lot of different fronts for uh, coverage and attention and, and bring people into the fold, um, you know, with that call to action of like, join us every second and fourth Thursday and... <laughs> Um, you know, find yeah. us on the wiki and, you know, post on the discord channel, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. I think we're trying to like lock in what is the focus, our next focus. And I, I think we're getting, we had that discussion last week. I met with Ken offline about it. I think we should tune that message so that when we do this outreach and we've got that, uh, sort of, I'm going to call it a blitz happening, um, that we're delivered, you know, we're consistent in here's what we want to do. Here's where we think we can be a value so that that push comes with that message of here's where we want to go. Come join us with this goal in mind. So lo I think locking that messaging up is probably important about our next use case focus. Yeah. And it's like, if people are interested in verifiable credentials, but they're also interested in, yeah, healthcare, like that, like this is one of those core, like people <laughs> providing, providing 
health credentials to people is one of those core use cases that I think the community has really always been really passionate about. Um, and I think it's, you know, just making people aware of what we're doing and that Cardi exists and that we're doing the work. Okay. Okay. All right. Excellent. So I've got that um, sorted out. So hopefully that locking in of that messaging, we can try to button that up next week. And the two of between this completion and the lock, the, the finalizing of our future focus together will allow us to finish that. Awesome. Alrighty, so that's next, we'll lock that in for next week is to finalize those agendas and messaging. Excellent. Okay. Alrighty, anything else anybody has for today? Nope. Okay, well then I think we can adjourn a little early. Okay. Well Thank done. you. Thanks, Trevor. Good luck with, with your dad. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. All right. Bye. Bye.
Thank you. 